What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for another episode of Player Ratings as we crashed out the FA Cup at the expense, well, at our expense at the uh, hands of Middlesbrough at the Riverside last night. And let's get straight into it with Hugo Lloris. Sevens all round from us. Um, for the most part of the game, up until the final five minutes, I mean, he was hardly called upon uh, into action. And then in, in those last five minutes, he made, I can't remember if it was in extra time or two in, uh, in the 90 minutes, but he made re two really crucial saves to keep us in the game. Apart from that, I felt uh, that his um, his commandingness or his he caught a few crosses from corners as well that came in. But apart from that, I mean, for the most part of the game, he wasn't really called into action. Yeah, I think probably my man of the match. I think especially for the later part, the save from Jones in the um, in the last minute came, took us extra time. Then in extra time, he got, made a really good save from Tavernier on the volley. Um, there was another save that he made from across, across the face of goal, which he just about got to. And as you say, he was really commanding from crosses and stuff. So that was a really positive. I was, don't think he could do much with the goal. Just a great finish from the young striker. Um, so if it wasn't for Hugo, we probably wouldn't have made it to extra time. But l yeah. luckily, he was on good form. Exactly. Uh, let's move over to Matt Doherty, uh, right wing back. Sim gives him a five. I gave him a six. Um, for the opening like 20 minutes, he looked like our best player. He looked like a man playing with a bit of confidence. Um, he even took it round the keeper at one stage uh, and obviously skied over that open goal. But I think for a, a few moments in that first opening 20 minutes, 25 minutes, he was uh, looking uh, to make stuff happen on that right hand side. But as the game wore on, he kind of diminished in influence. Um, and, you know, as much as we want to say he had a good opening 20 minutes, still the um, clear evidence of lack, lack of end product. Yeah, and he, w he was one of our better players, but that's not saying much because we were terrible on the day. And he had our two best moments of the first half, shot from the edge of the area and an open goal, which um, he bo he miscued both efforts. But at least he was getting in the positions, which was positive. Um, and I actually thought he was probably one of our more positive players when he was taken off. But again, he wasn't exactly dominating on the right-hand side. He wasn't exactly causing them constant issues. It was just the odd moment. And... Um, that's why I haven't marked him too highly, but he was one of our better players. Yeah. Uh, Kuti Romero, Sim gives him a four, I gave him a five. Um, was not a good display from him by any stretch of the imagination. It felt nervy, rushed. Um, he got he got put under a lot of pressure in this game and um, he didn't seem to stand up to it too much and obviously got that yellow card uh, for getting involved in that scuffle, which he really shouldn't have been getting involved in. But yeah, not, not such a good display from Kuti this time out. Yeah, and I actually think for the goal, he's um, again... He's the one who looked, he had he had the striker he had him and uh, he he lost his man and the striker was able to go for I want to call him the Coburn I think his name is he was able to go for him score and he had Romero as much as Emerson was playing him on side uh, Romero lost his man completely allowed him to go through walk into the area and score from his man from a corner a couple of times he lost his man but in general play when um, we're looking to be positive and we're looking to get on the front foot and intercept he was again one of our better players so I think. He'll be disappointed with some of his defending, but he's again surrounded by players who's make him do a lot more work than he should do. Yeah, uh, which brings us on to Eric Dyer. Sim gives him a five, I gave him a six. And I actually thought Dyer um, had a fairly good game yesterday um, in terms of what actually went on. Defensively, I think he did his job um, bringing the ball out as well. I think he was quite good with his pings uh, out to Cessnion and Doherty. Um, and also, in a weird way, he was our biggest threat um, in front of goal, in, in front of the uh, the Middlesbrough goal. He had that um, header from the corner. He had a shot scrambled off the line in the last minutes. And he also had that free kick, which was a really good effort, for, forced a really good save out the keeper as well. So actually, I think he was his, he was our biggest threat on goal yesterday. Yeah, it was a good free kick, wasn't it? It was nice to see him taking over from Kane because I know Dyer can take free kicks a lot better than him. And yeah, he had a corner which nearly found the um, a couple of times and he found the near post was very close. But uh, yeah, and I think he was all right, actually. And I think his passing out wide to Sessignon a lot of the time was pretty good. So nothing to mark him down for too much. I just think um, defensively, uh, when we went down, when we went back to four at the back, we were a bit of a shit show and the leadership maybe could have been a bit better at that, p that moment. But I think individually, it was a fairly decent display from him. Which moves us on to Ben Davis. Davis. Sim gives him a five, I give him a six. And again, I thought Ben Davis played uh, fairly well uh, throughout the whole, throughout the majority of the game. When he was in a back three, I felt like he combined his defensive and attacking duties quite well. Um, it was his flick on at the post that uh, lead, led to Kane's offside goal. Um, 
and he got fouled as well on the on the edge of the box that led to that free kick I think we were talking about with Eric Dyer I'm not sure it might have been the Harry Kane one where he slipped but all in all um, it was an okay display but but nothing really to write home about yeah um, again like he wasn't finding himself in dangerous positions which we saw at the beginning of Conte's tenure I think that is waning out of his game maybe he can't keep up with the uh, ability to get forward and back like he was before but um, I think on, on the ball he was all right he was playing some decent passes into central midfield, but once we found those central midfielders, the moves were breaking down more often than not. So an average display from Ben Davis, nothing too bad, but um, wasn't exceptional either. Mm. Uh, Ryan Sessegnon, uh, four from Simeon, five for me, obviously played left wing back. And again, um, a bit similar to Matt Doherty, he found himself in really good positions in the opening 10, 20 minutes of the game. Um, tried to get the ball in the box a couple of times, tried to beat his man a couple of times. But after that, he was pretty much just defending for the rest of the game. And in a game like this against a championship opposition, you need your fullbacks to be taking charge of this game. And he didn't really do that. Yeah, and he tied, I thought. He got taken off after 80 minutes for Bergwijn as well. And I felt like he was, his influence in the game waned quite badly. He kept cutting inside, I felt, too much um, within the first uh, hour he was on the pitch before he stopped getting on the ball and we need him to be taking going on the outside of, uh, of players and whipping balls in because when he cuts inside his right foot is nowhere near as good as his left foot and he can't find the quality he, we need him to um, from the byline so um, that was a criticism I had and he wasn't getting involved enough at least Doherty had a couple of chances I can't remember too many efforts or crosses or dangerous moments mm. Session had unfortunately but uh, I think defensively from that side he was okay actually mm. Let's move on to Pierre-Emil Hoybier, fives all round from us. And I thought it was a bit of a game of two halves for him. I thought in the first half he was actually really good, um, especially off the ball, breaking down the moves in the middle of the park um, in the midfield, trying to win that midfield battle. Um, he brought that energy and aggression uh, to the team uh, that we know he can bring. But second half, I mean, he was a bit of a passenger in that second half on the ball. Um, he lost the ball countless amount of times. And uh, that's the story of uh, Hoybier, unfortunately. Yeah, I thought off the ball he was pretty solid. Um, I thought he was, as you say, while he won the ball back, of loads amount of time, good interceptions, good tackles, being really aggressive. And he was the one stepping up for most of most of the game off the ball. But on the ball, panicking, uh, yeah. rushing things, yeah. rushing passes, looking for um, Hollywood passes, which were never on, especially with his passing ability. He was never going to pull them off in, under those kind of conditions. And I've, we, we saw on the weekend when given Hoybier time and space, to pick out a pass, he's able to do it. But when you rush him, when you make him, um, when you make him rush his passing, he can be very inaccurate and very sloppy. And we saw that again yesterday. And it's part, a big part of the reason we, we failed to progress the ball um, up the pitch when we needed to. Mm -hmm. Let's move over to his midfield partner, Harry Winks. Threes all round from us, and that's probably being a bit generous, to be honest, because I thought he was absolutely shocking yesterday. Um, the stats that we will bring you in the morning show, I mean, didn't make one challenge the whole game. I uh, don't even know if we made an interception the whole game. Absolutely shocking. Um, he was a shadow pretty much um, of Johnny Housen the whole game. And yeah, there's really nothing much to say on Winks because he didn't it contribute anything positive positively to that game and lost the ball countless amount of times as well. And put our, yeah, and he put our team under so much pressure so many times. How many times, how many was, times did he get bypassed? He was giving the ball away and then they're on a counter-attack. So many times, just sloppy play, not precise. And when he's not providing on the ball, he's useless because we know off the ball he's never been great. He's never been the best player. He's never been the most aggressive didn't make he didn't couldn't get near at least Hoybier was getting involved getting in the, involved in the battles getting close to players make it difficult Winks it's almost as if when Winks got the boys it's like all right as long as he's like not dribbling past me or something then I'm just going to stay here but they do dribble past him as well so that doesn't even work but he is not getting involved whatsoever physically and combatively and th that is really disappointing because when you've got one midfielder doing all the work it leaves us so short and it leaves us completely exposed down the center and uh, Housen and the the other center mids were having an absolute field day uh, in the center it was too easy for them to just <coughs> play the ball around and um and get the ball out wide and and, and play their football we didn't stop them whatsoever there's only so much Hoybier can do on his own you know what i mean yeah and um that was proved yesterday Let's move on to Hyung Min Son. Uh, threes all round from us, unfortunately, for Sonny. Um, it was just a really poor day at the office. And, you know, people are talking about Sonny not being on form, uh, but the numbers not really reflecting that. But this was completely 
um, something else from Sonny yesterday. I haven't seen him put in such a bad display for a long time. And unfortunately, every time he got the ball, the ball either bounced off him or he made a um, was waiting too long to make his decisions and um, misplaced the pass. I mean, the moves just seem to break down time and time again every time Sonny got the ball yesterday. And we're talking about two players in Kane and Son and Kane will get into in a second but when these two players don't step up and don't provide for us no one seemed to no one seemed seem to uh, provide for us which is really hurting us time and time again uh, when Bergwijn came on he did kind of um, slip Bergwijn in where Bergwijn maybe should have done be a bit better from but Apart from that, it was a uh, no-show from Sonny really yesterday. Yeah, he should have got, he could have got an assist for a good pass to Kulu as well, but mm. he, Kulu completely missed hit the shot. Um, yeah, Son had one of those, just one of those days where he was completely all over the place. He was crowded out in the centre. He wanted too much time on the ball. He wanted too much space with the ball, and um, Middlesbrough. Uh, were able to just surround him and it was too easy to defend against. He wasn't able to hold off anyone. He seemed he seemed a bit weak, maybe a bit lethargic. Um, it was a very, very difficult day. The only maybe good thing is um, his set pieces. We created a few chances from some of his corners. So um, that was a positive. But in open play, I thought he was shambolic. Really, really poor. It's a, um, one of those performances from someone want to forget, for sure. And um, even on that day, he nearly could have got an assist. But... Um, he'll be very disappointed with his day's work because we we tried to put a lot of the of the play through him, but in that kind of inside number ten position, I think he struggled badly, and he only came alive really um, a bit later on when maybe we pushed him out wide a bit. But uh, he was struggling um, in the central area badly. Yeah, and, and in those moments, as, as much as he had a bad game, like you say, he could have had a couple of assists to his name, and that's why Conte kept him on the pitch because mm -hmm. you know, even when he's having a bad game, he can pull out those moments. So. Uh, that's that. And the last of the starting 11, Harry Kane. Uh, not the last. Uh, sorry, not the last, <laughs> but the uh, penultimate is uh, Harry Kane with fours all round from us. And you know what? This guy, he can't be um, like, he can't be the best player in the world every single bloody game um, where he's pulling it out for us. And I think it was just a bad day at the office for him. It really was. Um, in the in the previous games against Leeds and Man City, when you're looking at like nine or ten out of ten performances, he was dropping deep. He's controlling everything, being our best number eight, our best number ten, our best number nine. Uh, but just nothing was happening around him, and I think he struggled via that. And just he was trying to make stuff happen, but just nothing was really coming off. Just way too much reliance on him. Way, way, way too much mm. reliance on him. There's only so much he can do. Like there's only there's only so much until teams start to make plans for it. And then you have to rely on some of the other players to get involved. And unfortunately, um, yesterday was one of those days where Kane just couldn't do it um, all on his own. I think he tried his best. I think he got obviously got the goal for a corner, which was um, if, v if VAR was involved, who would have known if it was offside or not? VAR would have made that decision, but there's no VAR. So the the, the, of the linesman's um, call stands. Um, he tr he won a, s a lot of headers actually, um, especially late in the game when we're looking to uh, win it. Um, he did a lot of good flick ons to Bergwijn and to Son, and they could have done better with um, the chances he made. But when he got on the ball in the final third, he was crowded out. He wasn't able to get too many shots off, um, and he was kind of um, he was marked out of the game to be honest for a lot of it, apart from the flick ons. Yeah, he did put the ball in the back of the net in 90 minutes. Um, a lot of people saying it wasn't offside. I haven't really seen it back, so I'm not sure. To me, really on first on viewing, that. it looked offside. So. Yeah, I thought it looked offside at first viewing. But, but anyway. it's one of those when VAR draws the line, you never know yeah. what it could be. Mm. Um, all right, last of the starting 11 now in uh, Kulusevski. Sim gives him a four, I gave him a six. And. I thought he was the most industrious out of the front three yesterday. I thought he was the one uh, really trying to pick that lock and giving probably Middlesbrough uh, the most problems out of that front three. Uh, there were a couple of moments in there where he did create and um, could have found the back of the net or could have found an assist if uh, the other players were up to the task as well. But unfortunately, um, the players around him weren't really up to scratch. And to be honest, it wasn't the greatest performance from him either. So when I'm talking about it was it was the best um, out of the front three. It's the best of a very bad bunch. Yeah, he had a few good moments. He dribbled on the right-hand side in the penalty area, cut inside really well with a nutmeg and nearly fa uh, found got a shot off of the defender, which, uh, you know, again, I've, I've seen it. I have to see it back, but it looked like it he could have gone through the back of Kulu, but he couldn't get the shot off. And then I think, I believe, right at the beginning of um, extra time, he goes on another good dribble, gets a shot off on goal, and it just um, goes wide at the far post from 25 yards. So he was trying to create things. He was trying his best. But it was very difficult for him. I think he was probably on par for me with Harry Kane in terms of uh, like ability to find a few moments. But 
I think, especially in the first half, he struggled badly to get involved in the game and things were bouncing off him and he could have done a lot better. But I think he grew into it a bit more in the second half, actually. Hmm. All right, and the substitutes, Emerson Royale. Sim gives him a three, I gave him a two. Um, just a shocking, shocking, shocking display. I don't remember him doing one thing right. All I remember is absolutely every time he got the ball, it was absolutely tragic. Um, so I don't really want to speak about him too much. God, he was—he really annoyed me yesterday, actually, Emerson, because some of the decision-making he's doing in, in crucial moments of the game when we need to push on and get, um, get a goal, and he's just doing lazy um, passes, not thinking about what he's doing. And, and, you know, that performance yesterday, as much as he's had some bad performances uh, since coming to Tottenham, uh, that performance really started to make me think, like, this guy maybe really isn't up to it because he was doing things that are inexplicable on the, on, the, on the pitch. And we got so much worse defensively as well when he got on, which is uh, may, obviously you could argue it's because he moved forward the back. But um, I think he's, he's... And he's the one, obviously, who kept on the striker on side as well for the goal. So really bad cameo. I yeah, think that was... Man. That was disgraceful to keep him on side like that. There's no Tottenham player anywhere near him in that line. He's so, so deep for no reason. Yeah. For literally no reason. And the last rating we're going to give is to Steven Bergvine. Sim gives him a five. I gave him a six. I mean, as soon as he came on, um, you saw his kind of influence in the game going straight through on goal uh, with Paddy McNair making an absolutely brilliant uh, last-ditch challenge um, to save a goal. Uh, but apart from that, look, he, he tried, he huffed and he puffed, but we just couldn't blow that house down. Yeah, and he did some good through balls as well. He did a really good through ball to Kane, who nearly got ahead of the keeper. Um, if a few times he was playing some really good I think he played the ball to Son which uh, when he squared to Kulu as well so he definitely uh, gave a big burst of energy when he first came on for the first 10 minutes but um, unfortunately after you know uh, the initial burst for uh, after about 15 minutes it kind of quietened down a bit and he, then after that once uh, Barra got deeper and once there was no space, he struggled to really get involved. But he definitely made an instant impact and he was unlucky maybe that it didn't pay off mm. initially. Yeah. And last but not least, um, Antonio Conte falls all round from us. Um, yeah, just not too great for Antonio. I mean, when you look at the starting lineup that started the game yesterday, no one would have had that many problems on the outset of it and you would think it's definitely good enough to win the game. Uh, but in hindsight, you're probably thinking when you're seeing the players on the pitch, they just looked leggy uh, massively yesterday. And they did put quite a bit of effort into that Leeds game yes, um, a couple of days ago on Saturday. Uh, but that's no excuses, really. It's no excuses. I mean, in hindsight, I maybe would have started Regulon, maybe would have started Bergvine. But all in all, you can't really have too many problems with the starting lineup. But where I start to have the problems is the in-game management from Antonio yesterday. I felt that he left it way too late to make the changes. Um, he switched it to a back four and then not much longer switched it back to a back five. Nothing really seemed to work. I mean, we did create a few more chances when we went to a back four. But we, on the other side, we looked so much more open when we went to a back four. So he did change the system a couple of times yesterday, uh, but nothing seemed to work. And um, substitutions came way too late. Yeah, I think he made changes way, way, way too late. I think first half he saw we were struggling to really control the game. I think um, we were, we did have Middlesbrough at arm's length, but we, in terms of Spurs, uh, you know, a side challenging for th top six in the Premier League, going away to a Championship team, we expect we don't expect to just have counter attacks and just have a few moments here or there. You're expecting to dominate the ball. You're expecting to make Middlesbrough think about what you're going to do, not thinking about what they're going to do. And it seemed seemed increasingly like the uh, latter and mm. the former. Um, as the game went on, which was really frustrating. I think the the tactics probably didn't help in terms of having the two in the middle, which was struggling against Middlesbrough's three. And um, we, we he thought, I'd, look, he must have seen it, but he ch only changed it with 10 minutes to go. And that was our best period. Those final 10 minutes of the game and the first five minutes of extra time was our best period. And um, But as soon as Barra changed it and um, and got extra energy on, onto the pitch, um, we struggled to react to that. And all of a sudden, the, the momentum swung in Middlesbrough's, uh, back in Middlesbrough's way. And it just makes you think, if we could have changed a bit earlier, uh, maybe that and, and, and not left it so late, maybe we could have had more time to try and get that goal rather than just giving ourselves that 10-minute spell. Um, so he did change it positively so that you get to mark up. But you know the fact that he changed it so late, he's, he's got to be marked down for that. And the way we played as well, I think he's got to be marked down for that as well. So um, that was it was a bad day of the office for Conte. But I do feel sorry for him because his options are very, very limited. Yeah, extremely limited. 
Um, he's even got less options than Mourinho did last year, which is yeah. nuts. But and he has options, probably less options than Nuno did at the beginning of the season. Yeah. That's the reality. Yeah, that's absolutely absolutely right. Um, but anyway, that is our player ratings from the disastrous one nil defeat up at the Riverside yesterday, crashing out the FA Cup. Um, thank you everyone for joining today. Like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, come, come on, you Spurs. Spurs.